Howdy folks, I'm Ben Starr, the Ultimate Food Geek. Welcome back to my messy kitchen. And today I'm here with my lovely friends, Chip and Jenny Ferris, who I met at the restaurant where I was a chef at for seven and a half some odd years. And I've invited them over for some cocktailing and some holiday baking. And uh, apparently Chip is not that versed in baking, so we're gonna make him do all the work today. Yay. Maybe he'll oh, learn something. Cool. So on the agenda for today, at first, is a very simple recipe, because as I understand it, you're not the biggest baker. No. Uh, smallest baker. <laughs> smallest baker. So this is a recipe I devised where you can do everything in one bowl. So it's simple, it's less cleanup, uh, and it's super easy. My signature ingredient is Pumpkin, oh, and I'm most known for the pumpkin carrot cake that I made you all for your dinner party Delicious. the other day. Uh, this is almost as good. It doesn't have all the extra no, components, it's but it's a really lovely, flavorful, spicy, moist uh, pumpkin muffin that's super, super easy to do. So let's get started. We are, if you'll notice today, measuring by weight on a scale. I always use a scale in the kitchen because it is easier. There's less cleanup. You don't have a bunch of measuring spoons and measuring cups to worry about, and it's more accurate. If you get five people to measure one cup of flour, there will be different amounts of flour in each one of those five cups, right? Yes. So it is so much better to just use the scale. If you don't have a scale at home, just bite the bullet and order yourself a scale. It makes things so much easier once you have converted over to weighing things. You will love it and it will improve your baking. So we are going to start with mixing our liquid ingredients. And for baking purposes, sugars are counted as liquids. We're gonna do our white sugar first, eight ounces or one cup if you're measuring at home by volume. Excellent, that's eight Look ounces. That, 8.0. <laughs> Next, we're gonna do three and three quarters of an ounce of dark brown sugar. Light brown sugar is also okay. The only real difference between dark and light brown sugar is that Dark brown sugar is slightly less sweet because it has more molasses in it, which is less sweet than sugar. Okay, uh, next, two eggs. Do you know how to crack an egg? I do. Excellent. Well, at least I think I do. <laughs> right on top of the ridge, right? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> on my head? No. <laughs> it's always good to crack an egg on a flat surface. When you crack it on the edge of the bowl, you could drive shards of the shell into the egg. So it's much better to do it on a flat, even surface. You must be so proud of him. I'm so proud of him. I'm He's so going to do this whole myself. thing by himself. You want to rinse your hands? Next, we are going to do pumpkin. So if you want to open that can of pumpkin, and uh, we need to run to Spatula City real fast and get a spatula. No, no. Their daughter's name is Libby, and little known fact, she is named for the Libby Solid she Pumpkin. She is not! Excellent. And our final liquid ingredient is oil. Now, I actually like to use coconut oil for this recipe. It makes the... Muffins really, really moist and delicious. So if you're using coconut oil, that's about 3.75 ounces, and it's easier to measure coconut oil because it's solid by weight and then melting it. It doesn't need to be melted. Otherwise, just a regular half cup of any neutral oil canola, you can go ahead and dump it in. Uh, canola oil, and uh, that's all fine. Those weigh about three and a half ounces per half cup. So shall I whisk? You shall whisk, but let's not do it on top of the scale so we don't damage the scale. Shall Excellent. I, shall I All right. flip it up in the air? <laughs> Back onto the scale, we're going to do our flour, our dry ingredients, right on top of this. So eight right. and three quarters of an ounce. That's about one and three-fourths cups if you're measuring by volume. Now, a teaspoon of baking soda. In this instance, we're using baking soda as the leaven or not baking powder. They're not interchangeable. They are not. Good to know. Yes. Teaspoon of kosher salt. If you're using table salt or granulated salt, you'll use half a teaspoon. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> well, it'll be slightly salty muffins. They'll be nice and savory. Oh, that was half, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, no. One, you were supposed to oh, do a teaspoon. Good. So it's, it's fine. It was only a little bit extra. All right, uh, now it is time for spices. And I use spices pretty heavily in most of my recipes. So we're going to do a tablespoon of cinnamon. All right. Nice. Okay, uh, we're also going to do a tablespoon of ground ginger here. We'll buy you more cinnamon. That's fine. I get a bulk at Costco. Okay, be careful. Be Not careful. Winco. Oh, God, don't do too much. No wonder he doesn't bake. You're constantly... <laughs> oh, my God, it. do you want... Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to do a tablespoon of cardamom. Now, cardamom is not a spice a lot of folks associate it with dessert. 
uh, but it happens to go really beautifully with all these warm spices. And I get my cardamom in bulk at uh, the Indian market or the Indo-Pak supermarket because uh, cardamom, this much cardamom in the supermarket is like 12 bucks. And if you get it at the Indian market, this much, which is like four times that, is like six or seven bucks. So it's much cheaper to get them in bulk at an Indian market. Okay, now we're going to do half a teaspoon of ground cloves. And half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and I'm using whole nutmeg today, which means you get the joy of using the microplane. All right, that's great. You know how to use these? Well, I usually get a little dermis in the mix, but <laughs> we don't mind. Okay, it's just extra protein. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's not, maybe you it, don't. we're not selling it at a bake sale. Now you can certainly use pre-ground nutmeg. I like to buy my nutmeg whole because it's much fresher when you first grate it. All right, now it is time to Done. fold it all together. All right. Now, with any type of quick bread, as soon as you moisten the flour, it begins to develop gluten. So you want to work it as little as possible. So nice and gentle folds. Don't stir like crazy. And you only want to stir it just until all of the visible flour has disappeared into the matrix. Disappeared into the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jenny has uh, brought over our lined muffin tray. I'm sorry. Now, I typically make this in a double batch because these are really good and they disappear really fast. And anytime you bake and your neighbors can smell it, it's nice to take them some as a holiday gift, too, as well. If you like your neighbors. If you like your neighbors. There you go. Okay, no, no, stop, <laughs> okay that's stop, good. Stop. Nice and gentle. All right, you can rake that off. And then it is time to fill the muffin tins. And one of the tools that I absolutely love to do this Best. is with the ice cream scoop. It makes it so absolutely. much easier. So you're going to fill the ice cream scoop about evenly full, so not, not crazy overdone. That's pretty good. Maybe a Nailed little it. bit more than that. And just a little bit. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, and just dunk it right into there. Look at you. Yeah, get all of it out. There Master you go. Master Baker. Excellent. Careful with that pronunciation. <laughs> yeah, just drop it from above and you'll actually have more control over it. I see what you mean by that. Oh, you got a lot on the outside. There yeah. Excellent. Now, of course, you could add fresh or dried cranberries to this mix. I really do love the pumpkin and cranberry mix. Have you the ever flavor. Put chocolate chips? I have never done that because I have this weird thing with chocolate and pumpkin together, it's but I know delicious. people love it. So you could absolutely put chocolate chips. You could put any kind of nuts, though I do recommend you toast your nuts before yes, you do we that. Know. Okay, excellent. All right, those look great. Now, I have preheated the oven already to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, we're not going to bake them at 400, but for muffins, you want an initial blast of heat to really get them lofty and to nice, rise up nice and have you know, okay. curved tops, right? So we've preheated to 400 degrees. We're going to put the muffins in, but immediately turn the temperature down to 375 degrees, and then we're going to check them in about 20 minutes. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Okay, you have Okay, our muffins are just out of the oven at 20 minutes, and there are a couple of different ways to test for doneness. One of the most common old school ones is to use a toothpick. You can stick the toothpick in, and if it comes out with a little batter on it, you know they're not done and need to go back in. But then you've got a hole in your muffin, and that bothers me. There's another way that's actually, for me, a lot easier, and that's the touch test. You're going to gently touch the top of the muffin, and if it feels springy and you get some resistance, it pushes back on you, then you know they're done. But if you push in and it feels a little soggy and it stays in like that, this muffin isn't done, even though this one is, which means the whole thing's going to go back in for another three or four minutes. But, like, if I go around these, some of them are feeling done, but some of them, like this one, they're just a little too soft and gooey. They do need a few more minutes in the oven. All right, these have been back in the oven for three, four more minutes, and you can tell there's a nice full spring when you touch it. They're all that way. None of them seem extra soft on the top. That means they're done. But we should let them cool for five or ten minutes before we try to take them out because they're very delicate when they're warm. We still Much wanna... like me. Very oh, delicate. It's very delicate. We still want to taste them while they're warm with a little soft butter on them, of oh. course, but we need to wait five or ten minutes for that okay. to happen. Okay. All right, they are still warm, but not fully cool, so grab yourself a muffin. And I recommend just kind of tearing them open in the center, and I'm going to give you some of the softened 
Now this is salted butter, so that salty flavor you're going to get is from the butter, not from the muffin. Or, but he did oversalt the muffin. He too, did. Right? Hmm, hopefully not. Remember, because well, I mean, he measures over the bowl instead All right. of to the side. And just dig in whenever you're ready. Mm. Mm. They're good. They're, and they're not really salty. Delicious. <laughs> not too salty. <laughs> Texture's really nice, though, not, right? Kind of velvety and fine. Not too mm -hmm. super treppy, moist. gingerbread manny. It's all good. <laughs> Those Excellent. are delicious. Cool. Chip, mm. excellent job. Excellent job, Chip. Thank you. You can start One... cooking dinner every night. Oh, Yes, let's, <laughs> let's see how long that lasts. So that is it, folks. One bowl, less mess, super simple. Even Chip can do it, so you can too.